After publishing my video Bond Actor Roulette in February 2023, presenting a variety of actors who could fit the bill of becoming James Bond after Daniel Craig, it got widespread attention and sparked over 400 reactions by fans. 150 comments, 33% of the total, expressed that actor Henry Cavill would be their first or, in fact, only choice to fill the shoes of Daniel Craig. This stands out, especially because many cinema-goers have labelled Cavill's acting as wooden, not able to carry a scene or display nuances of emotion. This labelling began right after the release of Superman in 2013, in which Cavill portrayed the legendary Kryptonian superhero and became a household name in Hollywood. In an interview with Canadian men's lifestyle magazine Sharp, Cavill said that the superhero genre tends to be action movies. The acting isn't supposed to be highlighted. It's overshadowed by spectacle. There are more important things than a finessed performance. Now, Bond is not exactly a superhero in the classic sense of having, for instance, a cape or some extraordinary powers. But it is safe to put him in the same action movie category that Cavill was referring to in his comment. The performance of a Bond actor has never been on an award-winning level, nor have the films been conceived as profound dramas, not even coming close. If the Bond series hadn't been an action film franchise, well, you could have easily gotten some fine performances of a Laurence Olivier, Alec Guinness or Richard Burton, portraying a much darker and dramatic 007. But Bond isn't art house cinema. It's action, fun and glamour. This raises the question, what an audience expects from an actor portraying James Bond? The answer to that is not as easy as it seems. With Bond, you have fans ranging from the silent generation, born in the 1940s, up to Generation Z of the late 1990s, with Generation Alpha of the early 2010s being the next in line to experience the franchise and discovering its roots. With many A-list actors starring in action movies today, the focus isn't much on a multifaceted, dramatic, award-winning performance on screen. They just have to be charismatic, attractive and relatable. Not to forget, much of what oozes from the screen down to the audience is influenced by the director of a film. While many take great care in unlocking a wide range of emotions in an actor, others simply will not. When Cavill auditioned for the role of 007 in 2005, director Martin Campbell was thrilled with him and spoke about it in a June 2023 interview with Variety magazine. He looked great in the audition, his acting was tremendous, Campbell said. And look, if Daniel didn't exist, Henry would have made an excellent Bond. He looked terrific. He was in great physical shape, very handsome, very chiseled. He just looked a little young at that time back then. True, Cavill was 22 when he auditioned for Casino Royale. But the panel of eight, among them producers Barbara Broccoli, Michael G. Wilson, Martin Campbell and casting director Debbie McWilliams, had to reach a unanimous decision. That is how we got Daniel Craig. And we all remember how the backlash went after it was announced. Most of the criticism was directed at Craig's looks, not so much at his talent as an actor. So, as mentioned earlier, a big factor is attractiveness. Cavill definitely ticks all the boxes when it comes to that, as well as physique and believability of action sequences, like in Mission Impossible Fallout. Ten years after his Bond audition, Cavill starred as CIA agent Napoleon Solo in Guy Ritchie's The Man From U.N.C.L.E. Set in the Cold War era, the film's strong point was its style, not so much its substance. Among the most stylish elements was Cavill, looking much like the Bond we never got, but many wanted. Boiling it down to should or should he not play Bond, my personal opinion is to at least consider him. However, we have no indication what ideas for a continuation of the franchise are on the table at the moment. Not many by the looks of it. Casting the right actor will involve him fitting into the setting, the tone 
and style of the next film. For example, in the unlikely event that we get an origin story, Cavill is simply too old. But even now, as time moves on, with no casting process on the horizon, the producers are looking to tie down an actor for at least three films, as they have done in the past. Time is simply ticking away for Cavill. In his Variety interview, director Martin Campbell also said, Henry's 40, so by the time he's done the third one, he's going to be 50, and anything beyond, that's two, three years per bond. While the right age is a factor to consider for every actor, remember that Pierce Brosnan was 41 when he became Bond in 1994, and 51 when he opened up to the press about being fired from the role. Nevertheless, I think we probably won't see Henry Cavill taking up the Walther BPK and the keys to an Aston Martin, but you should never say never, especially in show business.